I don't know. I don't even know. I don't know. I don't even know. Ain't it hard to do? Yeah, like it doesn't matter. No, they do not make it easy. All right, we are live. This is lesson nine. All right, so we are live, and today is lesson nine, and our topic will be oobleck, oobleck. We're going to be dealing with non-Newtonian fluids. I just didn't feel like writing that all out. I will ex explain what that is, and I will spell it for you as we get started, but I'm going to allow some people to, to log in, but in case you want to follow along, and if you have all the proper equipment for today's experiment. This is what you'll need. You're going to need a half a cup of cornstarch. You'll need one quarter cup of water and you'll need a bowl to mix it in. And that is all. So we'll give it another minute and a half and then we'll get started. All right. I see we got the star jewels. Um, were we able to retrieve someone from their room? <laughs> oh boy. We got Dr. Q. Dr. Q has joined us today. Thank you. Just a few more seconds, just allowing people to log in. And again, want you just to know this is what you'll need for today. Half a cup of cornstarch, quarter cup of water, and then a bowl to mix everything in. And that is all you will need for today. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I do wanted to give you just a heads up. I have been expecting a very important phone call today. And if it comes in, I will have to take it. But no worries. My wonderful wife is very well versed in the experiment. And so she will take over while I have to go address that call if it comes in while we are live. All right. Just want to make that known. So so you're aware. I did want to keep going at two o'clock like I promised, though. So before we get started. Ask yourself. What is it that a scientist needs in order to be safe? All right, we know every day I've discussed that the most important thing that a scientist has to pay attention to whenever they do an experiment, whenever they run a reaction is safety. Safety is critical because if you're not safe, you can harm yourself, you can harm other people. And we don't want to harm ourselves. We don't want to harm other people. We want to be as safe as possible at all times. All right. So a scientist wears goggles to protect their eyes. We wear gloves to protect our hands and we wear lab coats to protect our bodies and our clothing. And I just want to emphasize that at every lesson. 
For the ninth lesson in a row, those items are not necessary because our experiment is very safe. Tomorrow, however, I will be running two reactions. I hope everyone tunes in and even folks that you've been telling about it who haven't tuned in, let tell them to join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. because I'm gonna do two sets of experiments. Both of them involve the formation of carbon dioxide gas. I will be wearing my par personal protective equipment because it will be necessary for tomorrow. If I get them to work on the live stream, they should both be very fun and exciting. So I'm really hoping that you tune in for tomorrow. Let us just review one thing that we did yesterday. Recall what we did yesterday. I had some water that I dyed, looks like a purple color, and I placed a piece of celery in it. And the question I asked was, can I change the color of my celery? And for all of you who joined us yesterday, did you write in your lab notebook what your hypothesis was? Yes, you can change the color of the celery. Or no, you can't change the color of the celery. Well, here are my results. One day later, 24 hours later, you can see on the end here that color actually went inside of the celery up these tubes we call xylem. Remember that word from yesterday? Xylem, X-Y-L-E-M, xylem. And look at this. You can actually see the xylem. You can see uh, that they are a purplish color, a pinkish purplish color, all right? Proving or demonstrating that in fact, the water does flow up through the plant. And yes, although it is still overall a greenish yellow color, it is, and I don't know if it picks up really well on your cameras, but you can see the purple color has tracked all the way up to the top and out through the leaves. So now my leaves are turning a pinkish purplish color. And that is happening because even though this celery has been pulled from the ground, meaning it is already dead, those xylem behave much like straws and they still pull fluid all the way up and out through the celery. Now, if you've done this and uh, you'd like to let me know, you can take a picture of your celery. You can actually pull it apart like I've done and show me the xylem. Take a picture, hashtag it, science made simple, post it on Instagram, post it on Facebook, and I'll be able to see it and find it there. All right, I hope you had fun with that one. You could let it sit in the in your food coloring for a couple of days, in fact, and see just how much the color changes. For today, I hope you have your lab notebooks. You're gonna have to write down at least one really, really big word. Our topic for today is oobleck and non-Newtonian fluids. Non-Newtonian fluids. All right, that word fluids, that is spelled F-L-U-I-D-S. Fluids is spelled F-L-U-I-D-S. Fluids, all right? Fluid is another word for liquid, liquid. Liquid is spelled L-I-Q-U-I-D, L-I-Q-U-I-D. So we use the terms fluids and liquids, we use those interchangeably. Well, what is a liquid? A liquid is one of the three common states of matter matter that is what chemists like myself that's what we study we study matter and matter comes in three common forms there are several others but the three common forms that most of us encounter on a daily basis are solids liquids and gases all right solids liquids and gases oh i see my 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 nephews and my niece have joined us hey tony laurelyn and james i see you all right, Tony turned 10 yesterday. All right, so a solid, a good example of a solid would be ice. Ice is a solid form of H2O. A liquid, a good example of a liquid is water. Water is the liquid form of H2O. And a gas, like the vapor, if you boil a pot of water and you see this vapor coming off, that would be your gas state. H2O in the water vapor or gas state. Well, liquids, they are, they take the shape of whatever container that they are in. Okay, so if I take a liquid 
and I pour it into a container, it will take the shape of that container. That is different than a solid. A solid maintains its shape. So if I have a ball and I pour, drop it into a glass or a cup, it doesn't change its shape from that ball to, uh, to fit the shape of that container. It stays a ball. That's a solid. A liquid, I can pour it into a container and it will take the shape of that container. A gas, however, has no shape. It will, it will take up all of the space it can take up and it will continue to spread around. So unlike a, a liquid, which will take the shape of its container, the gas will not. It will just take the shape of everything around it and fill up all the space. So those are three common states of matter. And today we are making Ublek, which happens to be a liquid or a fluid, but it is unusual in its behavior because at some times it behaves not only as a liquid, but it also behaves kind of like a solid, all right? We call these types of liquids non-Newtonian, non-Newtonian. So I'm going to spell that for you. Non-Newtonian, it is a hyphenated word. Non is N-O-N, and then you put a hyphen, and I will actually write it down for you, N-O-N with a hyphen, and then Newtonian is spelled N-E-W-T-O-N-I-A-N. -E okay, I will spell it one more time. N-O-N hyphen N-E-W-T-O-N-I-A-N, non-Newtonian, non-Newtonian. All right, so what does that word mean? What does non-Newtonian mean? Well, as I explained, Ublek uh, is a non-Newtonian fluid or a non-Newtonian liquid. And believe it or not, we are all familiar with non-Newtonian liquids. I have one. This is ketchup, all right? Ketchup is a non-Newtonian liquid or fluid. What does that mean? That means if I take this ketchup, well, let ask yourself this question. If I take a glass of water and I tip it upside down, and there's no lid or cap on the glass, I tip it upside down, what happens to the water? That's right, it pours out, it falls out of its container. But if I take ketchup and I tip it upside down, why is it that ketchup has a hard time falling out of its container? It is a liquid, right? Well, that is because it is non-Newtonian. In its resting state, when it's at ease, when no one is doing anything to it, it behaves more like a solid. So what do you do to get the ketchup out of the bottle? Well, in order to get the ketchup out of the bottle, I have to squeeze it or I'll strike the bottle, I'll hit the bottle. And all of a sudden, that ketchup that was behaving like a solid will then begin to flow. It begins to flow. And that is why we call it non-Newtonian. When it has no stress or force applied to it, it is uh, it behaves like a solid the moment i apply a force or a stress to it it behaves like a liquid all right now there are, there are multiple classes of non-newtonian fluids ketchup we call that one sheer thinning sheer thinning we spell sheer s h e a r Again, we spell sheer, S-H-E-A-R, all right? Not to be confused with other forms of sheer, which are spelled S-H-E-E-R, all right? Sheer thinning, sheer thinning. That means it kind of flows once the stress is applied to it. Today, we're making oobleck, and oobleck is the opposite. It is sheer thickening. That means it behaves like a liquid when it's at rest. So if I put it, uh, oobleck in a bottle, and tip the bottle upside down, the oobleck would pour out. But if I take oobleck and I strike it or hit it, it actually behaves like a solid. We call that one sheer 
thickening. So there's thinning and there's thickening. Thinning and thickening. All right. So uh, we're going to do more of a demonstration today than an experiment. And so here's what you'll need to do. I have my bowl. And I actually do have measuring cups. So you want to use twice as much cornstarch for those who have uh, cornstarch. You want to use twice as much cornstarch as you're using water. OK, so for me, I have half a cup of I have half a cup of cornstarch that I'm going to use and then a quarter cup of water. All right. So take your cornstarch. Warning, this will get messy. Parents, I apologize, but I hope the kids love it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take my cornstarch. Actually, give me a second. I'll be right back. All right, I'm going to take this cornstarch and put it here in my bowl. And then you'll need uh, water, OK? And again, I'm using 1 half cup cornstarch, 1 quarter cup of water. If you start out uh, with a cup of cornstarch, then you'll want to use half a cup of water, all right? Again, you just want to use twice as much cornstarch as water. So I'm going to get some water to put in here. All right. And then here's the real messy part. You're going to put your hands in it and mix it up as much as you can, all right? You want to make sure all the cornstarch is actually wet. You want to make sure all the cornstarch is actually wet, all right? I need a little more water, actually. OK, so <laughs> this is going to get real messy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All righty. So if it's if it's very, very runny, what you probably want to do is add just a little more cornstarch. If it's too thick, you'll want to. Oh, boy, I added too much. <laughs> this, this will be fun. But I do want to show you what happens. So this might take a minute or two to get all your cornstarch wet. But once the cornstarch is wet, you'll notice that you can put it, uh, turn it into like a little ball. Like you can actually mold it with your hands and shape it. As long as you are consistently moving it around and applying, an, applying a force to it, it behaves very much like a solid. All right. But the moment you release and let go, it becomes more like a liquid. All right. OK, I keep messing this up. I want to get this to work so you all can see exactly what I'm referring to when I say it behaves both like a solid and a liquid. Also, if you get the chance after today's lesson, I would highly recommend getting on YouTube and searching for Ublek and look for a video. There are lots of these videos where people are actually running on top of Ublek. They have made these large pools of it and because it behaves like a solid when it's under stress, that means if you move across it fast enough and you put your foot down on it, you're applying a force to it, which means you can actually walk on it like you can solid ground. However, 
If you just stand on top of it, you'll sink into it like quicksand. All right, so I've made some pretty good oobleck here. Here we go. Now we can see it. All right, everyone see that? Now I'm gonna show you what happens if I try to make a ball out of this. All right, I'm gonna try to make a ball really quickly. So see this, I can actually, I can turn this, this, this liquid, I can actually turn it into a ball. But I'm, as soon as I release the ball, you'll see it turn into a liquid again. See, now because there's no stress, it's a liquid. But once I apply stress, I can actually pull it apart like a solid. All right. That is a non-Newtonian fluid. In fact, we call this one shear thickening. That shear is the force or the stress that you apply to it. And because you do that, you actually cause it to thicken. All right. Or become more solid like. All right, uh, you can have fun with this for a long time. What will happen eventually is that the cornstarch will begin to dry up and then you will lose this non Newtonian liquid effect. So I just uh, hope you have fun with this. You can dye your water and therefore dye your, your oobleck, or you can not dye it and actually retrieve your cornstarch for all the people who want to conserve their, their supply of cornstarch. It'll dry out and you can use it to cook with if you so desire. So with that, I want to let you all know that I'm on Instagram at science made simple underscore LLC. And you can also find me on YouTube. I've done this uh, Ublek and I have my, my full explanation of the science behind what Ublek is and what you can do with it on my YouTube channel. You can find me there at Dr. Boyd the Chemist if you go to YouTube and search for Dr. Boyd the Chemist. And also if you're having fun with this at home, and you want to let me see it, post a picture or a video of you playing with your oobleck, hashtag it science made simple, post it on Instagram or on Facebook, and I'll be able to find it there. Tomorrow completes our two weeks of science lessons, and I hope that they've been helpful to the parents and educational for the children. Tomorrow, I'm going to do two experiments in which I create carbon dioxide gas. It should be fun if everything works well. And hopefully I can get it, to, get it to work for you live. We will be doing elephant toothpaste and we'll be doing a variation of the volcano experiment. And I hope that'll be a lot of fun for you. And I'll be posting information on what you need in order to follow along with those two experiments on tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Take care.